aircraft has been flown and will continue to be flown on this incident. Uh, they are a vital part of our operation and so you will continue to see uh, fixed wing aircraft as well as helicopters flying in the area uh, doing fire suppression for us. Last night we saw a little bit lower temperatures uh, and some more, uh, a little bit increase in humidity recovery, but not much. We're expecting today, um, we're gonna get upper 80s to mid 90s again. Uh, we're looking at terrain driven winds out of the Northeast to start with, uh, as it changes into the afternoon, they're gonna change over to Southwest. So um, again, the humidities will be between 10 and 20%. With that, uh, throughout the rest of the week, we're gonna start getting the weather system, pushing in some higher winds. The temperatures are gonna decrease through the week. Um, we're gonna start seeing a little bit of a rise in humidity, um, but they're gonna continue to get stronger out of the Southwest. So the area that we have of concern up here in the, in the drainage is gonna start getting wind tested. And with the fire behavior piece, um, obviously the smoldering continues. Um, we have some potential as it continues to go on to get some surfacing of those smoldering fuels that are underground, so be aware of that. The good news is that if we do have something surface outside the line, the rates of spread aren't going to be fantastic. They're not going to be anything more than slow to moderate unless we get that wind and um, terrain alignment, so just be aware of that. Um, that's it for fire weather, fire behavior. All right, so we've got uh, hazard trees out there. I heard they were falling yesterday with the little wind we had. They were falling like twigs, so be mindful of the twigs, trees, or the widow makers that are out there. Dehydration, multiple days in a row, people are working in hot weather. That accumulates, be mindful of dehydration, heat injuries, get that message out. Ash pits, stump holes. We had an accident with a person that fell into a root burn that had traveled a great distance, dropped a leg into the, the hole very uh, very dangerous get that message out to recognize those mark them mark them as hazards we had a safety officer safety officer foreman yesterday found a ash pit that was seven feet in diameter seven feet he sounded all carefully sounded like you would sound a roof all the way around that ash pit hazard marked it that was probably five to seven feet deep imagine stepping into that unknowingly where your ppe Mark the hazards. Tell your folks how to identify those. Because that's probably what a lot of people are hearing right now. What I'd like you guys to do is go back and make sure that everyone understands the plan and understands what it is they're doing today. If you see folks out there, residents, give them a hand. Help them out. If you see stuff that needs to be done, get it done. Thank you very much. Reminder, tomorrow's morning briefing will be here at 0700 for those on a 24-hour shift. Monday morning briefing here again, 0700 on Monday. Thank you and have a safe shift. We are working very hard uh, at, at trying to get uh, uh, 
residents back into their homes and as we as we continue to uh, to, to work uh, you will be updated and uh, we'll, we'll be passing on the information as to when those uh, residents will be able to get back into their homes. Hello, I'm Dean Peterson, and I've been tasked by the state of California in cooperation with Calaveras County as the operations chief for the uh, debris, debris removal recovery operations after the Butte fire. Um, as we all know, the Butte fire started in early September, uh, ravaged a large portion of Calaveras County, uh, approximately 70,000 acres. Uh, and when we see a fire like this come through, it gets very hot, and unfortunately in this situation, it destroys homes and people's livelihood. Um, what we have here is a typical site, uh, and the fire comes through, and we have many concerns with this. Um, within building materials, we have a lot of toxic materials. We have a lot of heavy metals, potential for asbestos, uh, and other types of pesticides and paints, um, such as lead. Uh, cadmium and arsenic that can come down to the ground. So it's very important uh, in order for the community to stay healthy and the environment to stay healthy that these materials are cleaned up appropriately. Um, the state of California has designed a debris removal operation program that has been successful in many uh, communities and organizations uh, to help um, communities come back. Uh, the process, as we'll see later, is uh, fairly simple, but it is very precise. We do not want to create additional dust or ash uh, into the air. Uh, we do air monitoring throughout the process, um, and the process will basically be when this site uh, is ready to go, we will start applying water onto it to keep the ash down. Um, we will pick the metal off. The metal will be recycled. Uh, we then dispose of all the ash, debris, and soil at a uh, class two lined uh, landfill that is located down in Stockton, California. Um, and then we able to come in and take the concrete. Uh, it's very important with homes that have foundations that we actually take the foundations out because the heat will destroy the foundations in the concrete. Uh, once the concrete is removed, we scrape the soil uh, and then we sample the soil. Um, we have a three-year-old goal and that goal basically translates into the ability when we are done the property owner can have a three-year-old walk on the property and it'll be completely clean. At that point, the property owner can start envisioning a new home and start planning and getting the permits needed. And is there anything that you want to tell people um, who are watching this and maybe they're not really sure where they are along their path to purpose or throughout their journey of faith so far? Yeah, um, if you're a victim of the fire, uh, Samaritan's Purse are really awesome people who will talk through it with you, um, help you deal with the emotional stress, uh, really help you get into the mess, get down there and uh, start sifting for your valuables and everything that's important to you. Um, keep strong. Um, I can already see places in the soil where little bits of green are starting to come up. There's life. It's coming back. I see wildlife out there. It's coming back. And uh, yeah, it's time to make it bigger and better. As we look at this part of your property over here, what was here before? So th there was my home and my shop, and uh, these guys have been here since about 8.30 this morning, moving the big pieces so that we could get down to hopefully some things intact here. And they have left, uh, as, as you can see, a large pile of, uh, of scrap, you know, but it's, 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 it's memories. It's not just scrap and everything, but uh, 
you know, 40 years of, <laughs> of living. And so, but we've got a, a new start and it started today. So here is a site in progress of cleaning up. We've removed the metal and most of the ash and the concrete. Uh, at this point, we're now scraping the soil. We usually take about two to three inches of soil off to make sure that any of the ash and the toxic material did not embed itself into the soil. Um, once this process is done, and again, all this material is taken to a class two landfill uh, and disposed of properly, uh, the crews do not see this as a demolition project. They see this as a recovery process. So every crew member is fully dedicated to returning a clean property back to the property owners so that they then can rebuild their house. At this point, again, we're, what we're doing is we're removing the ash in the soil. We're taking all of the toxic material. And again, the ash has heavy metals in it, um, possibly asbestos in it, uh, things that if blown into the environment are going to cause not only a public health concern to neighbors and the individuals coming back to the property, but also to the environment. Uh, we have a number of creeks and rivers that flow through here, um, very sensitive watershed areas. Uh, so it's important that we protect not only the property and the future property residents, but the environment itself. Um, once uh, this material is removed and we test the soil, uh, the property will be handed back to the property owner so they can rebuild their house. So the final step to the removal process is to actually take environmental sampling. This is again to ensure that the properties are returned to the owners so a three-year-old can walk on them. So one of the important parts of what we do is to take environmental soil sampling. So the environmental sampling that we do is to basically ensure that the property owner will receive a clean property. We take surface soil sampling, which will be sent off to an environmental lab, and results are given back. If we find any contamination on the property, we will come back and take additional soil to ensure the site is clean and free of any encumbrances. We place the soil in small brass tubes. And these will then be shipped off to an environmental laboratory. We typically take two samples per resident. And again, if we find any contamination, we will end up coming to taking more soil back. This is the final step. Once we receive the results back, then the property is given back to the property owner.